Hey there. Good afternoon, everyone. Come back from a break. Just wax Sid. Um, <laughs> so I'm Ginger Zielinski, and I'm the executive director of Benefits Data Trust. Um, we are a not-for-profit organization in Philly. Um, yeah, Woo! about it. Um, and our mission is that we're committed to transforming how people in need access public benefits. What does that mean? Uh, that means that I work with 100 amazing people who works with state agencies, cities, community-based organizations to identify individuals that are eligible for public benefits. We conduct outreach through mail and phone. We help them understand what they're eligible for. We complete the applications on their behalf, including gathering all that nasty documentation. <laughs> and we make sure that they actually get enrolled. What I want to talk to you today, or at least start talking about, is poverty. Um, we know who's poor. If you're working at a city agency, it's really possible to find the indicators of who's living without. Uh, without enough money to cover food, shelter, health care, heat. Um, there's 61 million people in America that live under the poverty line. I find that unacceptable. Um, in Philly alone, there's 450,000. That's about a third. Um, also, I think, unacceptable. So we know that sometimes individuals are able to access one piece of benefit. So maybe they can get Medicaid for six months, get bumped off. Then maybe they go through the hard process of trying to find a heat application because it's cold and it's winter. And then maybe their kid gets sick, so they have to go back on Medicaid. Um, unfortunately, this isn't doing the trick. We also know that if people are able to get all of the benefits for which they're eligible, that they do actually work. Uh, we know that kids who are able to access food are better students. Long-term impacts, this is, you know, random control sample that they do better in the long term, that they can be more economically independent as adults. Seniors, a huge problem. And just so you know, we've got about 44 million seniors in America right now. The wave is coming. There's going to be about 85 by 2025. We need to figure out how to make sure that we're helping low-income seniors get the benefits that they need so that they can stay in their homes. As you know, the Oregon study showed that if folks are able to get Medicaid, they actually do get preventative care. So these benefits work. So how do we make sure that people get what they need when they need it so that they can move on and have a more financially independent life where um, you know, they can be successful. So I do think that, bar that, that benefits is a way to help people really, instead of thinking about it as a safety net, think of it as a safety ladder. Unfortunately, there are many barriers to access. Um, starting with awareness. Uh, hard to believe, but there are many people who are eligible for services that don't have any idea. Again, if we talk about seniors, only one-third of seniors that are eligible for food stamps get it. That's, you know, two-thirds don't. Um, and going back to the outcome slide, we know that if they actually are able to get the food that they need, they're more likely to stay in their homes. Um, we've talked a lot about complicated applications process. Um, Monsef yesterday was talking about the SNAP application, the nasty documents and that you get, the notices that it's like, what does this even say? And we all, you know, don't have a problem reading. Um, now if you think about folks that are challenged from a literacy perspective, from a language perspective, um, and then you're talking about really intimate and sensitive stuff, like I, I don't know how I'm going to feed my kids. Um, we have to develop systems that actually uh, support individuals, that it's easy for them to apply and to, to, to really break down these barriers to access. So uh, at BDT, um, we've worked really hard to, combat, uh, to come up with some solutions. Um, we're about eight years old. We've talked to over a million people, and we've completed over 350,000 applications. Um, the way in which we've done this is really working with states. Um, if you're on Medicaid, you're eligible for SNAP. I just checked your Medicaid. I just checked your income. Why do I need to show it to you again? Why do I need to get another piece of paper? And the answer is you don't. Um, so that's really what we've been testing and demonstrating with different states and cities across the country. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to check my notes. I can kind of go off on a tear. Um, <laughs> 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 um, so we can create 
notices, like Monsef was talking about, that are simple and easy to understand. It's the same as Clay was talking about with procurement. Like, let's just make this language that people can actually understand. Um, we can make benefits access more comprehensive. If I'm applying for one, why can't I apply for, for several? Um, agencies go through, and, and so I have to apply for a Medicaid application over here, and then I have to go to another agency, which means I probably have to take an afternoon off work, right? Or I have to figure out how to, I'm going to get childcare, or I'm going to have to bring my kids with me to the county assistance office, and then I'm going to have to sit there for two hours to apply for LIHEAP. I'm going to leave, and then I'm going to come back because the documentation is incomplete. Asking people that are facing really critical problems to go through that complicated process is just not a reality, and it's not one that I think that we can, can um, accept. Um, so using data to simplify and streamline the applications process is not only making it more simple and making it more comprehensive, it's making it more cost effective. Um, South Carolina created express lane eligibility where they took children that were on SNAP and automatically enrolled them into CHIP. They saved, fifth, CHIP is kids Medicaid or, or kids healthcare. They saved 50,000 man hours a year. That's 25 FTE in one year just by using the data that they had access to. Way over my time. So, um, you know, simplicity is certainly a theme of the day uh, this afternoon. And, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of ways that we can make benefits access more simple. And we know that if people are able to get the benefits that they're eligible for, they have better outcomes and they can have better economic success. So, thanks.